All that stuff will make sense, hopefully, in this example here. So we're asked to construct a frequency distribution that has seven classes for the following data set, this one. So number of classes, we're told that we have seven. Now, if you go through and find the maximum value, that is 450. If we find the minimum value going through here, that's going to be 59. So our range is 450 minus 59, which gives us a total of 391. So our range is 391. Next, we need to establish the class width. So for the class width, we take our 391 and divide it by the number of classes that we want, seven. And if you throw that into a calculator, that gives us roughly 55.86. And now looking at our numbers in our data set, they're all whole numbers. And so what we'll do is we'll take our class width to be 56. So again, our minimum data value was 59. And what we'll do is we'll add 56 to it to give us the next lower limit for the second class. And then we'll just keep going with this process, add 56 each time. And again, since all our data values are whole numbers, we are just going to put the upper limit one below the lower limit of the next class. So our upper limit for the first is going to be 114. Then you can either keep subtracting one from this number to put it up here, or you can add 56 to this number to give you the next number. Right, both ways work. It'll give you exactly the same class limits. Oh, I skipped one. So this one right here should be 282. And this one should be 338. I apologize about that. So those are our classes. And now I'm not going to bore you with the whole tally thing. If you want, take a second, pause the video, count up each thing. But essentially, we're going to have five in here from 59 to 114. We'll have eight between 115 and 170, six for the next class, five for the next, two between 283 and 338, only one between 339 and 394, and we'll have three in this upper class. So notice, right? Um, 450, which was our max value, landed up here, which is really, really nice. But that doesn't always have to happen when you're doing this type of construction. You can have an upper class limit that isn't the max value. Just something to pay attention to. Now, if we count up all these data sets, or this, all the data values, we have a total of 30. Now, if we add up all these numbers here, right, and to represent adding up in math, we use the capital letter, uh, the capital Greek letter sigma of F. So adding all those up, you should be getting 30. That's a good way to double check. Go in here, manually count it, figure out how many you're supposed to have. Once you're done with the tallies and you know the frequencies, add the frequencies up to make sure that you counted everything. Next, we can talk about the midpoint. Just like in geometry, the midpoint is essentially the average of the two numbers or the two coordinates or whatever that you're looking for. So the midpoint of a class is the sum of the lower and upper limits of the class divided by two. This is sometimes called 
the class mark. So if we go ahead and write that down the formula in words, midpoint is the upper class limit plus the lower class limit divided by two. So for example, if we come over here, the midpoint for this one is going to be 114 plus 59 divided by 2, which whatever number that gives you, that's going to be smack dab right in the middle of that class. Next, we can talk about what is called the relative frequency. of a class is the portion or percentage of the data that falls in that class. So to figure out the relative frequency, we take the class frequency and divide it by the sample size. So in symbols, that is the class frequency F divided by the total number of samples N. Then once you have all of this information, another number that you can keep track of is what is called the cumulative frequency of a class, which is just the sum of the frequencies of that class and all previous classes. So in this one, the cumulative frequency for the first class is five, the cumulative frequency for the second class is going to be 13, 5 plus 8. The cumulative frequency for the third class is going to be 19, because that's 5 plus 8 plus 6, and then it just keeps going down. And the cumulative frequency for the last class should be the total number of data points that you have. It should be 30.